Um, let me just invite Dr. Subha Sharma, uh, Sir, Director of IBA, Dr. Shivaji Rao Deshmukh, Sir, Director of Vasudhada Sugar Institute, Mr. R.K. Sinha, Sir, Dr. Anil Rajwanshi, Sir, and Sri Mukul Kanitkar, Sir, to come up over the dais and take the seats. We are very proud to have Dr. Subha Sharma, Sir, Director of Indus Business Academy. He is a leading Indian management thinker and author of well-known creative and thought-provoking books such as Creation from Shunya, Management in New Age, Western, Windows, Eastern Door, Quantum Rope, Science, Mysticism and Management, and lot many. He has made significant contributions to institutions building. He is founder, founder member of Wisdom, Women's Institute for Studies in Development Oriented Management, Banastali University, Banastali is a founding director of Indian Institute of Plantation Management, Bangalore, and is currently the director of Indus Business Academy, Bangalore. As an innovative experimenter, Professor Shubhash Sharma has been experimenting with innovative approaches to teaching and learning, such as the idea of poetic methodology to teach management and leadership concepts through his well known corporate lines and 3D, that is, discussion, dialogue, and discourse model of learning. His innovations have drawn print and television media attention. May I request uh, Dr. Sandeep Bhargav sir to please participate, Dr. Subhan Sharma sir. Well, this is the second time I'm here in this beautiful institution, and I must compliment uh, the faculty colleagues here, particularly Dr. Nisha Pandey and Mosti, for taking this initiative to, you know, present to the entire nation this new concept of the social entrepreneurship and social responsibility combined together. And as uh, Mahesh Kedwanji mentioned, that in India, right from the ancient times, these ideas were communicated in a very subtle and uh, you know, popular manner through the stories and through the you know, phrases such as the story of the, you know, Krishna and Sudama, I got a new interpretation today, that it really represented an idea of the how the haves and the have-nots, you know, that kind of an idea, which we never thought that this story communicated that kind of a powerful idea. And then, of course, the concept of the dharmkata and also the dharmkata, the balance. You know, we always have this balance that you go to the temple, you sit on one side, and then the other side is balance. And uh, that gave me an idea which I call the G by T ratio. G is for give and T is for take. So how much we are giving to the society and how much we are taking forth from the society. And there are always three types of people. Those who have G by T greater than one. That means they give more and more to the society. Those who have G by T less than one who keep on taking from the society and never give it back to the society. And of course, some of us who will try to balance it out and you know, that will the three types of people you can see in the society. I'm happy to share an introduction to this conference through the metaphor of what I call the four lions and the idea of the new earth sastra for the you know, sustainability vision. Of the society. So when we look at these four lines, which is our national symbol, uh, what kind of idea we get from these four lines? Traditionally, of course, you know, we look all, in all four directions. That's the kind of a leadership model which is communicated by these four lines. And uh, in fact, this as a leadership model has not yet entered into the management textbooks. But in addition to being a leadership model, today I would like to present to you uh, another perspective on these four lines. These four lines really represent four fundamental forces which are influencing us as individuals, 
as institutions, the organizations, as nations, and also as a group. Now these are four fundamental forces. The force of market, I don't have from that. The force of, if you go to Kanad Place in Delhi, you can see the force of market. The force of the state, of the government. So if you walk towards the parliament street, you see the force of the state out there. And then, if you walk a little further to Jantar Mantar, you see the force of people. What I call the, also the force of capillary action. The grassroots institutions. That force, which I also call it as the Gram. Gram stands for grassroots action and management. So this Gram force is so powerful in India. And Maheshji mentioned about the Gram force in a different manner. He gave the example of a move. He gave the example of the religious barber. So this social entrepreneurship is really represented by this force of the Gram, which is very, very powerful force. Uh, but we have to only take a proper cognizance of the same. And then, of course, the force of the self. These are the four fundamental forces. But how many... Sorry. Can you just get, get back to it? So how many lines we end up seeing normally? We go back to the four lines. First slide. Yes. Uh, so how many lines we end up seeing normally? We only see the three lines. Lion of the market, lion of the state. And in fact, we don't even see the lion who is looking at us, the force of people. The traditional intellectual discourse of last 150 years, what became known as the communism and socialism and the capitalism, was focused only on this, these two lines. The lion who is looking at front, in front of us was completely ignored or only marginally taken into the social discourse. So that was the limitation. Oh, sorry. Can you? So when we put this idea, then we get the, this swastika model of the four forces. If you look at this swastika, you have the x-axis. In the x-axis, you have the market and the state. And then there is a y-axis. And that y-axis represents the people and the self. The hidden line, which has generally been ignored in the intellectual discourse as a part of the holistic approach. So what, what is required today is a holistic vision for the sustainable growth and the conceptual model for that is represented by this swastika model of the four fundamental forces. Another way of looking at this idea is, again, the market and the state, and the y-axis can also be represented by the idea which we call the soil and the soul. The soil and the soul. Now, again, in the intellectual discourse, our focus has been mostly at the market and the state. The soil and the soul has, by and large, been ignored as a part of the total framework, holistic framework. Again, marginally, people here and there will be writing about the soil and the soul, but as a part of the comprehensive holistic thinking, you find it missing, at least in the textbooks of the intellectual discourse. Now, the soil and the soul represents the y-axis, and the market and the state represent the x-axis. Now, a fundamental question which we need to ask, and that is the crux of this conference, is that whether the market and the state are enriching the soil and the soul, or are they spoiling the soil and the soul, or are they neutral to the soil and the soul? So these are the three questions which we need to ask. If they are enriching, then how they are enriching? If they are spoiling, then how they are spoiling? And if they are neutral, then we need to look at it. Now all of these issues of ecological problems are indicating that the market and the state have been either spoiling it or are neutral to it. And so therefore, in our policy making, 
the idea of the soil and soil has not been properly integrated. And there is a reason for that, and the reason for that, is, and therefore we need what I call the idea of the new earth sasana. We need to look at the earth. Soil and the soul has to be connected with the market and the state. So therefore, India gave the book, the Earth Sastra, Kautilya's Earth Sastra, the famous book. But today, I think for the future of India and the future of the world, we need a new framework and a new book. And that's the idea which I call it as the New Earth Sastra. Now, therefore, what it means is that we need to move beyond the Adam Smith and Karl Marx at an intellectual level. And because both of them were basically top-down approaches, they were not social entrepreneurship approaches. And then they were also insensitive to the ecological dimension. So that is the critique of both these ideas. So the, our model of development is still x-axis oriented. We need to incorporate the y-axis into that model of development. What it means is that we need to have the Mahatma Gandhi and the, the Swami Vivekananda. And this is the institution of the Swami Vivekananda. And therefore, Adam Smith and Karl Marx have to be moderated by this y-axis which India has given to the whole world. And that is the thoughts of Mahatma Gandhi and the thoughts of Swami Vivekananda. Swami Vivekananda representing the hidden lion and Gandhi representing the lion who is looking at front of us and in spite of that we have been ignoring that particular lion. So that's the basic idea. And this basic idea is represented in this conference. So the conceptual framework for this conference is now presented here that on one side you have the corporate representing the market, you have the government representing the state, you have the social entrepreneurship, of the people, and my history gave the many examples of that. The capillary action, I use the phrase capillary action model of development, from taking from physics. And then, of course, the ecological and the spiritual concerns and the business ethics. The EBS, the ethics, values, and spirituality. That's the idea which, you know, Dr. Mohd has also been working on that. I have also been working on that and some other colleagues have been working. So now today we need to put them together and that is the idea of what our Prime Minister has said. Sabka Saath, Sabka Vikas, the holistic development. That means you have to take the corporate along with you, the government along with you, the people along with you and the ethics and values along with you. Then only we will get a new vision for the India and the new vision for the whole.